welcome to Biotrack Sailing. Well, this is normally a sailing channel. This episode will be a road, about a road trip in a Tesla in our Model Y. After finishing quarantine in Canada, we decided to go across Ontario to visit family. Beautiful scenery across the top of Lake Superior. We live in Boston, but traveled to Canada in our new Model Y Tesla, which is spacious enough for car camping. There is some sailing in this video. We had prepared the boat for being away, removing all the cushions and the typical things. But right after we finished our 14 day quarantine, Hurricane Isaias was announced. So we asked our friends to do some extra preparations, which we show on Biotrack. There are Tesla chargers all across Canada along the Trans-Canada Highway. The challenge for us was to maximize efficiency, reduce stopping times, and for charging on our second night to go to a campground where we would rely on getting non-standard charging post and see if we could get a charge there. We made a mistake in converting miles and kilometers and like the Grim Gimli glider, we fell short of destination. Pierre shows his MacGyver-like skills, so we were not stuck in the woods for days. Rather, we were just able to charge the car overnight and get we'll on our way. Rod? Good morning. Good morning. Can I take a video of you? Sure can. <laughs> my, you, you scared my dog. <laughs> See this one? <laughs> 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 She's scared. She's <laughs> scared. I'm not sure about that. She's <laughs> scared. We live on a boat. Well, you live on the a boat. Ocean. Well, so you don't see not, these things then. We don't see these things. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can see angry. through it. Here's what it's made from. And it's made from that. That's obsidian. That's, that's, that's obsidian. obsidian. Yeah. Those are moose antler. Moose antlers with obsidian. Day two, I thought it'd be fun to stop for the night at Quetico Provincial Park, which was close to destination. I called them up and found out they closed the gates at 8 p.m. We could only make it if we didn't stop in Thunder Bay to charge. But if we couldn't charge at the park, we would not have enough energy to get back to Thunder Bay. There was another Tesla charger near the park, but not on the road to destination. I started calculating how many miles we would need in reserve to get there, just in case. But my calculations were in miles, and we had switched the car to kilometers. So we're, we're drafting and... An average of 174 watt hour per kilometers. Projected range of 257. Our destination is 194. So we're in your we're bank. There's no Tesla charger there. It's a campground. We have no tools. And you're banking on that one of our adapters will fit. That's it. And if not, we need 100 to get to the next charger. So our delta again is... 
are being prepared and videos of our track during and after the storm and all was well. Camping, Tesla style. The bed is set up. <laughs> I can't get there. A screwdriver is not long enough to go in there. Lisa, fix that. <laughs> Okay, so we had a miscalculation on um, how You told me miles, I told you kilometers. But now we have, a, we have an issue. We have an issue because we're plugged into a very, very slow charger. And we don't want to stay here all day tomorrow. <laughs> Pierre's trying to fix this one, which won't work because why? 120, 30 amps plug. And the way the 120, 30 amps, it's ground, neutral, load. This is a 240 50 amp plug which has a ground neutral L1 L2 and when you're using 240 on a car for example you only use L1 L2 you don't lose the neutral and ground of course so the problem is that they've transferred the neutral over to neutral which is normal so if I was to take the load from here instead of from there it would work so I just have to open up this connector from the charger, which is very long. Yes. This well, that's 50 feet. And which plugs into the car, which right? Which is good for 50 amps. This, like I said, I just have to open this up or up and remove a wire from one of the and legs And the problem to this. is that we have a tiny, tiny little toolkit. <laughs> <laughs> and this doesn't fit in there. So now we need a screwdriver to go in there. You've borrowed a screwdriver. Yes, <laughs> that gentleman was very nice to loan me a smaller end screwdriver. So technically, if I take this lead, Take it over to the neutral, it should solve all the issue. Oh, we'll see. Or if it doesn't work, then I'll reverse it. And <laughs> and uh, could it blow it up so now we can't charge the car and we can't get anywhere? No, no, absolutely not. But we have to remember that we don't have any food either. <laughs> I said I should take a video of it saying it's going to take 24 hours to charge the car, and you said what? It's no, I said no, it's not 24, it's plus 24. <laughs> Do we know how much plus? Well, let's calculate it. Right now it's charging at four kilometers, six kilo, actually, six kilometers per hour. Yes. Let's say four let's miles say per hour. Let's say the units. Four miles per hour. And we've got to put 300 miles in it. Divide. <laughs> <laughs> How many <of> these? <laughs> So the problem is in Canada, it's kilometers per hour. This is like the, the Gimli glider. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> July 23rd, 1983. A tale that has become legendary in aviation history. A landing so dramatic, so risky, and one that defied the odds. An error in calculation involving a switch from the imperial system to metric meant that the plane only had enough fuel for half its flight. Yeah. So the Gimli glider is famous because there was a little calculation error and they, the, they the plane didn't have enough fuel. They went to metric was the first aircraft Boeing ever did in Matrix. And uh, <laughs> it's like conversion error. <laughs> <laughs> conversion error. And uh, yeah, they uh, had a miraculous landing where nobody died. And uh, it's very famous in Canada, and landing in Gimli Field. And a former aircraft f uh, airport, which was used for dragsters, they came in and glided a 767 in there. The engine sailed at about 30 odd thousand feet and uh, they had to uh, glide. Fortunately, Captain Bob Pearson was an established glider pilot and so he was now in the world's biggest glider. All right, so? Works. <laughs> so charging at 32 amps instead of uh, 12. Big improvement. And you can see that's working. at the family-run Hanson's Lodge located on Crows Lake. Crows Lake has beautiful, warm, turquoise-colored deep waters. Just a beautiful location. 
see the link in the description below. Oh, it's a different one. It's a different pair, yeah. It's right through where those, uh... You, you see it just behind the trunk of the tree. I'll hold it when it's Oh, me. that's a keeper. Yes. Good Ooh. job, Leia. Thank no. you. Okay. Let's see its eyes. Walleye. Beautiful. Caleb, you're standing on the live well. <laughs> Is it too big? No. There's... No, that's <laughs> our food. These ones don't taste as good. I promise. Yeah. So, I caught it. Oh, here, take a picture of me because I caught it. Hand under his belly. Like this. Uh, oh, that's all right. He's here. has got it like that. Okay, so the reason not to keep the big one is so they can make more fish, mm -hmm. right? Make right. more fish. And also, and also this, they the, don't taste as well. As the, the flesh isn't quite as hard. Yeah. Oh, he's 23. Yeah, he's going to go back. That was our trip to Crows Lake near Nestor Falls, where we still did Hanson's Lodge. Highly recommended. We just had a terrific two days. But it was now going to be a long drive back, and we were anxious to get back to Boston. We did stop at other family cottages on the way home, some drone shots, and then onward to Boston and back to Biotrack. <laughs>